about the reaction to the Glenn Serio arrest video. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Number one, I'm honestly happy that nobody asked me to sit and watch that for the first time. Uh, the way that he treated the officers, and in particular the female officer, was so ridiculously outlandish and disrespectful that I don't even know what to say. It's got to be something that he's just totally wanting to look, oh, howdy, um, if he's trying to look cool, you know, like those kids in high school that say stupid stuff just so that they can like look cool in front of their friends. I feel like he just feels like he needs to be as obnoxious and rude as possible to get the likes and the, and the votes and sit at the cool kid table in the cafeteria. But when in reality, that cool kid table is not the cool kid table. Um, it just sickens me to think that society has stooped to recording themselves doing that sort of thing versus recording themselves trying to educate the public on something or entertain in a way that is not disrespectful to to women or to police officers or to anyone in general. I mean, everybody likes a good joke here and there, but there's a line and you don't cross it. And when you're teaching your kids, you know, look, there's a time and a place for things. If you want to goof around with your buddies and say obnoxious things, I guess, fine. I mean, kids do what kids do. But this is a grown man who goes and he's pushing a literally pushing a button a panic button is, is what it was i guess the, doing and again drawing attention away from officers that actually have real jobs to do and to yeah they only act like yeah because they they have important things you know if you think about any police agency there are so many cases that are open and being investigated that it's not just like you write a ticket and send it in and okay, it's all done, prosecutor will take care of it. There's there's follow-up that needs to be done. There are administrative things that need to be done. And this individual takes it upon himself to walk in there like a toddler and push buttons and then refuse to talk to the people that, that are offering to help him. And it's just crazy. I mean, I don't know if it, there's some sort of issue going on there or if it's a personality disorder that just can't be treated um i don't know i will say though in the video that that i did with mike looking at his arraignment he was really quiet and i don't i don't know if it has hit that the stuff that he did was way over the line or I don't know what it was if his attorney said you need to sit there and be quiet because you're only gonna make things worse for yourself maybe uh, but at any rate I I feel for that female officer you know female officers are in a minority to start with in the force and to have to endure that sort of crappy ridiculing bullying nonsense the way that she and and the male officers handled it was extremely professional and I would be proud for them to be officers where I am because it, you you can only take so much as a human and an individual no matter how much training you have everybody's got a line and he was teetering on the edge of I've seen maybe officers that wouldn't have been so kind with him and they still treated him with respect even when they were handcuffing him and trying to get him into custody and explain to him what was going on and going back just his ridiculous behavior at the roadside i mean for god's sakes this officer is just trying to tell you he's writing a citation if you think that that citation is wrong there's a whole legal process to fight the citation maybe you should learn about that process and maybe give people the education about how you respectfully legally argue a citation if you weren't on your phone and he says you're on your phone okay fight it out in court uh, but to just be obnoxious about it doesn't do anybody any good so I really hope that this is like the end of his videos hey unclean hands nice to see you in here um, 
I hope this is the end of his popularity uh, in trying to get to the cool kid table at, at the high school because I feel like the cool kid table is actually the people that are inclusive of everyone and are respectful and kind and stand up for themselves but do it in a way that doesn't trample on others and that's what I really try to teach my kids you know I've told them forever if I ever hear that you're the one picking on a kid or teasing them about what they're wearing or how they look you will regret that very much so and uh, i like to think that i'm an includer i i my family jokes that i pick up friends like stray cats like okay kind of do but i feel that that human connection that you have with people and making sure that people feel valued and kids especially when i go into the elementary there's hugs kids are saying hi my friends kids are ex my friends kids you know they 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 like having adults pay attention to them and you know ask them about their day it takes 2 seconds to be kind to people right and this crap that glenn and these other people are are putting on the internet that is now accessible to kids i just it's I think I'm very thankful my kids weren't around when I started watching that video it because I don't want to have to answer those questions at this point at their young ages as to why somebody would say those things what does that thing even mean and why are why is he yelling at these police officers we teach our kids to respect the law and again if you feel that you have been wronged or the process has not been followed that's when you do the correct method of fighting that citation or that charge if it's a crime going through the process and again doing it in a respectful manner using law that is actually founded in law right like not just making up or taking bits and pieces of cases and and making it work to your advantage you know the neat thing about the law is it's always changing right there's always cases coming out uh, from our Court of Appeals or our Supreme Court and it changes how we handle things. It changes how we handle traffic stops. It changes how you, how you handle custody cases. The law is always evolving and I get it. It's, it's not a perfect system. There are things that we could do better, but you know, it, it can't be fixed by people like that, right? It's got to be fixed by people who can speak in terms that are not derogatory. It's people that can put sentences together in a way that people can understand what you're trying to do and prove your point. And that's where, you know, sometimes we have to agree to disagree. I will say that's one of the things that in dealing with sovereign citizens, I have been able to come to an agreement to agree to disagree on things. Um, there's a fundamental difference in how sovereign citizens interpret the law from how I interpret the law and constitution. That doesn't make them an evil person, you know, as long as they're not hurling insults at me and being completely disrespectful, I'll listen to what you have to say and we'll have an adult discussion about it. We'll maybe have an adult argument about it but at the end of the day you let it go you agree to disagree and you walk away and maybe some of their points could be valid you know that's how the law changes by people bringing up actual changes that they believe should happen and supportive evidence as to why that law should change so hey secret squirrel all right any i don't think i can scroll through these um on my phone so if there's any particular questions that you guys have Again, I gotta get home for the big game. Nof Singer, I should get Luke on here. He is a hoot. Uh, let's see. No, it's just like happy people talking to each other. That's fun too. All right, well guys, I think that I have probably run my course on tonight's lives, but I appreciate it. I still have the video that I have been trying to upload for a solid week and a half is at 95%. So that's the one that is uh, about the different types of courts and more so about uh, the probate court and abuse neglect cases and how those kind of roll through the court system. So if you're interested in that, 
hopefully it should be up soon. So again, thank you for the congratulations on my 3K. That's pretty cool. I mean, I would have never thought this would happen. Um, but, you know, as far as a female officer, I, I don't know about civil matters. Like that's more of a Mike Gravelin question, I guess, with civil cases. But as far as the criminal case, uh, for the disturbing the peace and that sort of thing, that female officer very well and very much should be a main witness for the behavior that he was exhibiting in a public place that was causing a disturbance. If he does end up pleading to something, I would certainly, if I were the prosecutor on that case, I would have that female officer write a victim impact statement about how that affected her, how that made her feel, and I know it sounds all like touchy feel like, oh, how did it make you feel? That's what the judge is looking for. How did this person's behavior affect you? And again, thankfully, I'm sure that woman is a very strong, smart, capable woman, and she handled that situation way better than what I've seen others handle those. Uh, but I would want her to speak on behalf of herself and law enforcement and tell the judge what has occurred because the judges have pretty wide discretion, at least in Michigan, uh, to use um, the full amount of days for a misdemeanor. And I thought they said that one of his charges was a one-year misdemeanor. So uh, if he needs to go sit in jail for a year to realize that what he's doing is not how adults should be acting, so be it. Sometimes that's just the way it goes with punishment, right? Because maybe I'll do a uh, a talk on the sentencing considerations so that people know what is it that judges are really looking at when they're trying to determine the sentence so all right everybody it's been really fun hey taco i know i'm like supposed to return your call at some point i'll get there uh, unclean hands thank you so much for stopping in i feel like starstruck that you're here for my live that i just decided to do randomly so all right, guys. Hey, have a wonderful night, and I'll see you guys next time. See if I can get this turned off without putting my finger over the lens. Yes, Luke is really nice in real life and very funny.